Today in the lab, we're going to be going over the basics of DNS. So get ready. All right. What is DNS? You're probably thinking, oh, great, more acronyms. Yeah, the, the, welcome to IT. Just but get used to it, guys. There's going to be a lot of acronyms. But what is DNS? DNS stands for Domain Name System. Um, it can also be like Domain Name Servers, but the main way is Domain Name System. And basically, the way to think of it is kind of like as a phone book. You know, back in the old days, I don't know how many people remember phone books. You know, you go up and you had to look up anybody, and everybody used to be like, oh, you got to put like three A's or like five billion A's at the beginning, so you, you're the first in the phone book. It's kind of how DNS works, not the whole billion A's and all that stuff, but there are actual A's. We'll get into that later. But the point of a domain name system is to be able to figure out what the name of something is. So, you know, when you go to Google.com on your web browser, when you're actually not going to Google.com, it's just translating to that. Let me go over here real quick on my server. Let's bring up a command prompt. I'm going to ping Google.com. We're going to see what happens. All right. If you notice, when I ping Google.com, look what comes back right here. We've got an IP address, all right? That IP address is what's actually translating to Google.com, and that's what DNS does. What DNS does is it takes a name, such as Google.com, and translates it to an IP. So when you go out and your system's looking for Facebook.com, Reddit.com, Google.com, Twitter.com, all these different places, you know, who knows where you're going. But what happens is your system goes out, hits an object, such as maybe Cloudflare or somebody else that's hosting internet domain records. I mean, what it says is, hey, I'm looking for Google.com. And it'll say, oh, you're looking for this IP address. Once it grabs that IP address, based off of what the model is, we're actually running the five layer model, which is the IP suite model, I, uh, internet protocol small model. I don't have a video on that yet. I'm working on that. I do have one on the OSI model I'll put up here. That one's kind of outdated, but it is something that helps with trying to troubleshoot and figure things out. Back to DNS though. So what happens is, is you get a name for a domain pushed over to an IP. Now you're probably thinking, well, how, what, what, how does that control? Well, internally, you can have a DNS server also. You can have domain name systems, and this works whenever you're setting up Active Directory. Up here, probably somewhere, I'll put it act, probably here. Yeah, that way. We'll put a link to Active Directory, and uh, that's just the basis of Active Directory and what it does. Anytime you install the Active Directory domain services role on a Windows server system, basically since 2003 and above, you will then have to promote it in a, in a process called DC promotion or DC promo. When you promote it, it actually goes ahead and installs and sets up that Active Directory server as a DNS server. And what that means is that anytime your systems locally are trying to look up a name for a system, so if you notice whenever you go to name your computer or your name in a server or any of that and you're deploying it, well, if you want users or end users to go ahead and hit it by that name, so over here I've got Bodhi-DFS01, if I wanted them to hit that, that's what I tell them. If I want them to go ahead and get to my file server, I tell them, hey, go ahead and hit that. Locally, I could also give them that IP address. Both of them end up at the same location. And to show you guys that here real quick, we'll go ahead up here. We'll do Bodhi-DFS01. Boom. Look at that. Now watch. We're going to do whack whack 10.0.23.28. Boom. Same exact shares. Now, reason that's important is because that's what DNS does, is it translates an IP to a name or name to an IP. Now there's two different types of records I really want to make important today that I want to go over in DNS. So over here on my Windows server, if you notice over here on the left hand side, these are the roles I have installed. DNS is one of those roles. So we'll go ahead and click on DNS. We're going to go up to tools. We're going to bring open DNS. Here's the DNS structure. All right. Now you've got forward and reverse lookups. All right. The main one we're going to worry about today and the basics of it all is forward lookups. That means whenever you're trying to ping something or you're going out and looking for it, this is how it's found, all right? So what that means is that your system, say like we were just pinging Google.com, it went out and talked to a domain, a domain name system and said, hey, do you know who Google.com is? And it did. Now locally, if we do that, let me go down over here. If I actually go ahead and do IP config slash all, it's going to show us we have DNS servers. So it's using these two as DNS servers locally. So for our local network, for our LAN. So our LAN here in my lab has two DNS servers. Actually, I have four, but only two are showing right here. These two will then be used anytime I want to ping something. So if I want to ping DCO2, it's going to use one of those two domain servers, sorry, DNS servers, to ping it and resolve it. The way it does this is through what they call A names 
or a host name. So you have host, and the way it works is that a host name, sorry about that, a host name here is tied to a record. So you can actually go in, and we could say that if we wanted to make a new host name, we could call it anything. Say we wanted to call it X-Ray, and we knew the IP address was going to be 10.0.23.222. All right? What that means, and I click Add Host, it will go ahead and create an A record that if anybody were to go try to ping X-Ray, it'll try to ping this address and resolve that address. Now, the other thing you can do, what's really cool, is they have a thing called a C name. So that was an A name, guys. An A name record allows us to translate a name to an IP address. The next one after that is a C name, and these are pretty cool. They're aliases, so we can actually then point a name, such as RDS, Plex, Own Cloud, View, these different things, we can point them to an A name. So what that means, say I wanted to come over here, if I wanted to ping RDS, if you notice, it's actually pinging Bodhi-RDS01, and then it's getting us an IP address. So what happens there is, is I'm saying not only does it have a name of Bodhi-RDS01, but it also can be received, or sorry, it can also be viewed at RDS. So what a C name does is it's kind of an alias. It allows us to set a nickname or kind of another name that we can call a server, and that's what a C name allows us to do. So internally, domain names are very, 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 very good thing for us because it allows end users, we can go ahead and map end users instead of telling them, hey, I need you to go ahead and map to this IP address, and the end user would be like, what? You want me to, I, I don't know all those numbers you just said. Instead, you can say, hey, I need you to go ahead and map to whack, whack, file, whack. Not that hard to tell them backslash, backslash, file to be able to map to something. And that can be done easily through a C name. You can go ahead and create a C name that then would point to your file server and boom. Then you can just tell your username, just type in file, go to file, and it'll get you there instead of having to give them everything else. And that's why DNS is a big usage or a big deal inside uh, large entities and large environments. It allows you to be able to translate names to IP addresses. It makes it easier to set up end users and set up things so that way if you have group policies and such that are handing out map drives or doing things, you can easily just go ahead and use the name and put that in the group policy instead of always having to use an IP. Make sense? All right, guys. So that's that's the basics of DNS. It's the basics of what it does. Um, it's That's the basic two things that I wanted to go over, basically the A names and the C names. I've got more advanced videos I'm going to be doing over DNS and what I plan on you know, going over. DNS gets very advanced, especially once you get into KMS and some other services. There are some other different types of uh, records you can have inside DNS. There's also a lot of different really cool things you can do with DNS with uh, doing reverse and trying to figure your way out. So it's fantastic, and I plan on going over that a lot more in the future. So thanks for sticking around, guys. I hope this video was helpful for you. Go ahead and drop me a comment down below. Subscribe if you haven't. Like the video. If I did do something wrong, if you're like, dude, none of that made any complete sense, let me know what I did wrong down below. Maybe I can redo a video or something like that. Uh, watch all the rest of my videos. Let me know if there's something in there I didn't explain right or any of that. I'm trying to grow, trying to get bigger, guys. So thanks for all the support. And till then, I'll see you in the lab.